and welcome to this edition of Environment. We're in the Pyrenees on the French-Spanish border and we're about to go inside this little green door behind me to find out more about the Aladdin's cave of clean, clear energy that lies inside. This week we're looking at hydropower, a system that allows for the production of electricity without hardly any greenhouse gas emissions and yet for a reasonable price. The dam we're visiting today is small in terms of size but big in terms of environmental benefits. Which isn't always the case as dams can damage. As you'll see in Venezuela, ancient rooms look set to be submerged because of energetic interests. Finally, we're going to go to Switzerland. 50% of their electricity is already supplied by water and they want the energy to flow beyond their borders and set up a European-wide grid. The impressive Pyrenees show no exterior signs of the hydroelectric power station that they house. This dam was built with the utmost respect to the environment, yet it still manages to provide electricity to hundreds of homes. Once a mecca for cave explorers from around the world, today it's engineers that pass through the door some 600 metres beneath the mountaintop. Inside, twisting narrow passages that lead to an impressive grotto that the energy company says they've done all they can to protect. This dam was built manually with materials brought in on small trolleys. Only a short walkway and a few yards of black piping break the natural surface. It's only visible as far as here, because from here it's buried under the tunnel we just walked through, and it stays hidden underground until it reaches the power station in the valley. The underground river that has flowed here for centuries is no longer allowed to seep under the surface. It's now split, with some left on its natural path, but most of it is scooped up and sent tumbling down the mountain, gaining in energy as it falls. Water here is already running at a few kilometres an hour, humming like a car. When it arrives at the centre 600 metres further down, it has reached two-thirds the speed of sound. Back down in the valley, the factory that captures the water collects it at a rate of 860 litres a second, taking in a natural energy that can create electricity without any CO2 emissions. The water arrives into the turbine and is transformed from mechanical energy into electrical energy. This one small dam supplies electricity to around 2,000 homes. In itself, it's not the solution to France's energy needs, but stands as an example that sometimes smaller may be better. Well, once it's passed through the turbines, the water brought down from the mountains by the hydroelectric power station is then released into the river beside me, a riverbed that used to be dry for six months of the year. Thus, the power station is bringing new life and energy to the area. And water's energy is already responsible for 14% of the world's electricity. Here in Europe, Switzerland wants to take things that bit further and set up a European battery of renewable energy. Switzerland is home to impressive scenes of natural beauty and outstanding feats of engineering. More than half the country's electricity comes from hydroenergy thanks to the country's 500 dams. Switzerland is in a good place to produce hydroelectricity. It's a country of mountains and glaciers and this means we have the water at height, ready to drop down and make turbines work to produce electricity. Hydroenergy could be key to unlocking the potential of renewable energies. One expert believes all our solar panels and wind turbines should feed into our main electricity supply and that this grid should not stop at national borders but span Europe. Such a big uh, trans-European transmission grid would be very beneficial. When looking to wind, for instance, there is al always some wind blowing somewhere in Europe. Electricity from renewable sources is difficult to store, so hooking up solar panels and wind turbines to a large network of users makes sense. But what if the wind drops or the sun goes in? The potential grid would have to have a source of energy that could pick up the slack quickly. Something like... What's good about hydroelectricity is that the water goes directly to turning the turbines. In the space of 200 seconds, we can go from nothing to full power. Electricity is mostly transferred around Europe in alternative current. Fine for short distances, but over long distances, electricity would be lost. One solution would be to change our system to continuous current, 
a system already used in Russia, China and Brazil. A European grid is apparently technically possible and ecologically desirable and perhaps even cost effective. When doing right, uh, the electricity costs will be not higher than the conventional electricity production cost we have to pay today. But with electrical markets mostly organized along national lines, apathy is perhaps the biggest obstacle a transnational electricity grid would face. Well, this dam behind me was built at the start of the 20th century by the same company responsible for the dam we saw earlier in the show. As you can see, they have changed a lot in the way they think about the environment when constructing their hydroelectric power stations. But it's a change that's not seen everywhere. Across in Venezuela, ancient ruins could be submerged because of a new station there. In the Tashira region, dams have already caused havoc. A village had to be submerged to create an artificial lake. And in the nearby Golden Valley, an antique city might disappear because of a new construction project. It takes an hour to walk to the ruins. The site is relatively well preserved. These stones were brought by the Indians. You can't find any like these in the region. They're very good quality. Back in Merida, El Sorio, who works for the Archaeological Museum, is fighting for the site to be saved before it's too late. I believe there are ceremonial constructions, but unfortunately the state and the Cultural Heritage Institute, in charge of preserving archaeological sites, haven't done anything to preserve this one. These ruins are doomed to disappear under the dam's waters before excavation works are done. The forest could also get damaged by the new construction project. By modifying the normal course of the river, dams disrupt the ecosystem and the life of people living nearby. Millions of people throughout the world have been displaced so that their rivers could become powerful energy sources. And it's beside this calm and relaxing river that we're going to have to leave you. That's it for this week. See you next time.